Hello, welcome once again. Uh, today, this is a pictorial, not a schematic, of hopefully you'll get a better idea of what's going on upon starting your vehicle, any vehicle. Uh, domestic, doesn't matter. American, doesn't matter. So, in this pictorial over here, the symbols almost speak for themselves. ECM, obviously, is the computer, the engine control module. Now, it could be called the PCM, the ECU, same idea, same concept of a computer having control of the fuel line, of the spark, of the starter motor, and everything. So let's try to understand what's going on here. First of all, obviously, the battery is a physical ground. You see this, this denotes a physical ground to the engine block or any chassis. Now, the positive over here is connected to the ECM which we said is the computer the main main computer so we have a 12 volts obviously going from the battery to the ECM over here we have another wire over here now as you can see I have to draw these things in how do I know this is 12 volts how do I know this is a ground well this is connected to the positive so it has to be a 12 volts how do I know that this is a ground? And what does it mean there's a ground? Before we, uh, before we tackle that issue, let's look at, this is the fuel tank. And in the fuel tank, we obviously we have the fuel pump. We require pressure. 55 PSI, so like in Chevy, sometimes they need 60 PSI, a very high, quick uh, startup. So when you put in the start position, right? And not, I'm sorry, when you put in the run position, we're already trying to get pressure in the line. This is the line, the blue. So that when you go into the start position with your ignition switch, you already have the fuel, you're already ready to start the fuel going to the fuel injectors and, uh, and spark and other things to make compression. So here's the fuel line in blue. Here's this line, this is the electrical part of it. What you see over here is the electrical, these wires. This is the line, the fuel line itself. So we need pressure from here for what? To get fuel to the fuel injectors. There could be four fuel injectors, a four cylinder, it could be six, four six cylinder, it could be eight, four eight cylinder, whatever it is, whatever the amount is. We still need fuel pressure regardless of how much cylinders you have in that car regardless of how many liters regardless of the uh, uh, compression ratio uh, displacement anything a car always needs fuel pressure okay so we will develop fuel pressure from the fuel from the fuel tank from the fuel pump okay now what you don't see over here is the computer is giving a ground to what to the fuel injectors it's going to pulse them on. Fuel injector, you can think of a fuel injector of, let's say, a valve that closes and opens upon the wishes of the computer. When he tells the fuel injector to open, he'll spray fuel into the cylinder. When the ECM says it's enough fuel, you're rich, we got to lean it out a little, he's going to close the valve like a faucet in your bathroom. If you want more water, you open the, the, the faucet. If you want less water, you will close the faucet same idea except with fuel injectors and valves so he's giving a ground to the fuel injector that's where this comes in and that's where this comes in the computer is giving a ground to the fuel injector because they work on a toggling the ground those components before he makes this decision when to give a ground when to let fuel into the cylinders he has to decide on one thing inputs we all know there's many, many sensors going to the computer. As you can see up here, air intake temperature, which I've been doing so many videos on on all these sensors. These are inputs. As you can see, the arrows. If you're never sure, look at the direction of the arrow. This one is already drawn in, showing you these are inputs going into ECM. On the other side of the ECM <clears throat> is outputs. Inputs on this side, and when it goes through this symbol means it's going it's becoming an output so this will control outputs what is it controlling it's controlling an output of the fuel injector <clears throat> so here it is here's the engine speed <clears throat> uh the, how much gas you're giving it how much air all these things so 
and the temperature of the air. So all these things now, <clears throat> you're gonna go over here and it's gonna decide when to turn on the fuel injector, fine. One thing is missing here, the computer also has to give a ground to the relay of the, of the fuel pump. That's missing in this uh, pictorial. <clears throat> so it's a big process. Number one, he gets the input from the sensors. Number two, the computer reacts. He has to do something. Once you get the, the inputs, he has to react. I have to turn on the fuel pump. Then I get pressure in the line, let's say 55 PSI. That pressure will then go and give me fuel pressure that I can open up the fuel injectors to allow more fuel into each cylinder. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, troubleshooting wise, <clears throat> that's why I picked this. Uh, that's why I picked this pictorial. Let's say, obviously, you knock out the ground. Let's say the ground is not tight. It's not making a good connection. If you don't have have a do not have a good connection from the battery, no display at all will be upon your dashboard. Not the mileage. If you have a digital display you will not see numbers 80,000 miles whatever it is if there is a problem with this connection you will not be able to open the doors or move the cars if they are power seats or power doors okay so once you see that you know I might not have a possible connection either the positive or the negative or the battery now you can see how important now the computer is without this computer the fuel injectors cannot open and close. Therefore, there could be fuel pressure on the line. But if he does not give up, there has to be a pulse, a pulse, a pulse, a pulse, a pulse. There has to be a ground given to these to open these fuel injectors by the computer. Take out the computer. Let's take it out. Guess what? You have no fuel going to the fuel injectors. But you're going to say, yeah, but we have the fuel pump and we have fuel pressure. We have 55 p. It doesn't matter. You have to have a pulse turning these fuel injectors on and off according to his decision. So you can see the importance of the computer. Now, let's say I, I have the computer board is good, the printed circuit board, but I don't have 12 volts. Same scenario. Regardless of if the computer is not working or he's not getting the 12 volts because there's a fuse that's um, blowing, whatever it is, same scenario. I do not have the ground that I need to the fuel injectors. How important is he? Ye 20 years ago, it was starter, battery, not today. Look at this pictorial. He is, he is the one that decides everything, when to turn on the fuel, when to turn on the fuel pump, when to turn on the starter relay. So if your starter motor is not turn is not being turned on, remember, could be the starter motor relay is not being turned on by who? The computer. There's also something called a BCM. BCM body control module which, which communicates they are communicating to each other all the time, sending data and receiving and transmitting data. So the most important always remember is never overlook one thing there is a computer now turning on the car turning off the car in every sequence so i hope this was more uh, uh more uh, informative like i said go to the channel joe electronic mats for auto please go and look in those how to test a battery with the tester how to uh 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 test the relay in the circuit so i hope you enjoyed it and please uh watch the next video thanks